what is a buddha mind unless you drop even this idea of surrendering unless you drop even this idea of empty hands it is not really a surrender one has to drop even emptiness in the hands it is easy to understand the dropping of things but then hands were empty and buddha said drop it as well do not even cling to this emptiness inner journey is very simple but your mind its attributes and philosophical nature has it has made this journey so complicated that only a rare one reaches indeed when a person is totally in the present moment without any thought in the inner sky then he is a buddha mind but the first thing that you have to rem remember is if you are aware that there is no thought in your mind this too is a thought earlier on there were thoughts now you are aware that there is no thought this too is a thought even this is a thought that now there is no thought in you this thought is the last thought and the last obstruction allow it also to disappear and why are you waiting and what are you waiting for when the buddha nature is going to happen to you that again is a thought it will not happen in that we never i will tell you a story once a king came to gautam buddha he was a devotee a great devotee and he has come for the first time in the company of buddha in one of his hands he had one beautiful golden ornaments priceless with many jewels stuck in it it was the most precious that he had a rare piece of art he had come to present it to buddha just to show his devotion he came near in his left hand was that precious jeweled rare ornament he was going to present it to buddha but buddha said drop it the king was disturbed he never expected this he was shocked but because buddha was saying to drop it he dropped it in the other hand in the right hand he had brought a beautiful rose full blossomed he thought that buddha might not like stones he might just think that this was a childish thing that he had brought but it was good to have an alternative so he brought a beautiful rose a rose is not so gross not so material he has it has a spirituality something of the unknown is there and buddha might like it he thought because he says life is flux and flower is there in the morning and by evening it is no more it is more most flux like thing in the world so he put his other hand in front of the buddha and he wanted to present the flower to buddha buddha again said drop it then he felt even more disturbed now he had nothing to present but when buddha again said to drop it he 
dropped it. Then suddenly he became aware of the I. He thought, why am I presenting things when I can present myself? First he was presenting the outside objects. Now he became aware of the I. He thought, why am I presenting things when I can present myself? When he became aware, with both hands empty, he presented himself. But Buddha again said, drop it. Now he had nothing to drop. He had nothing to drop in the left hand, the precious jeweled piece of art that he had. He dropped it. The next hand he had a beautiful rose flower. That too he dropped. Just empty hands and Buddha again said, drop it. There were Sariputra, Mahakashyap, Anand and his other disciples. They all started laughing. The man became aware that even to say that I present myself to you is egoistic. Even to say I present myself to you is egoistic. Even to say I am here and I surrender to you and this is not really a surrender. Many times philosophically we say that I have surrendered to you. Who is the one who has surrendered? That is why Buddha never used the word I became enlightened. He said enlightenment happened. Enlightenment happened and that too is wrong. Enlightenment alone is. He became aware. So he himself fell down. Buddha smiled and said you have understood well. Unless you drop even this idea of surrendering, unless you drop even this idea of empty hands, it is not really a surrender. Along the path of inward journey, first you have to abandon the outside things, you have to abandon the logic, then you have to abandon even the master, and then even the thought that I have abandoned everything. Everything has slipped out of my hand. When one reaches near door, everything slips out of his hand. But the hands were empty and Buddha said, drop it. Do not even cling to this emptiness. When you do meditation, you have to drop the thoughts. And through meditation, thoughts are dropped. When thoughts are dropped, a thought remains and the thought is now I have become thoughtless and there is no thought. Many times seekers come and they say I have no thought but this also is a thought. If you do not have any thought in your mind floating on the inner sky, the sky is totally clear, you, the clouds do not have to see. The sky does not have to see, it just becomes visible. So too, to a Buddha cognition, the moment you come in front and it becomes clear whether there is a thought in the mind floating or thoughts floating or not, there is a subtle feeling, a thought that now I have achieved and now there is no thought. Now the mind is empty and I am empty. But this emptiness is filled with the thought. And the thought is that I have no thought. And whether thoughts are there or whether thoughts are there or a single thought makes no difference. Drop the thoughts also. So you drop the thoughts first and then this thought that there is no thought. And why are you waiting for the Buddha nature? 
वाई आर यू वाई आर यू वेटिंग फॉर द बुद्धा नेचर यू कैन नॉट बी वेट बिकॉज यू विल नॉट बी देयर एट दैट मोमेंट वेन यू रीच यू विल नेवर मीट बुद्धा वेन बुद्धा हैपन्स यू विल नॉट बी देयर सो योर होप्स आर फ्यूटाइल यू आर वेटिंग you are wasting time you will not be there one of the beautiful poets kabir he said when i was there you were not when i was there you were not now you are there and where has kabir gone because the love lane is very narrow two cannot exist together two means you and i the duality when the duality is not there who is there no one when i was seeking and seeking and desiring and hungering for you you were not this is what happened everybody is aspiring for a spiritual life they are seeking and seeking that's why they are seekers they are hungry for that time when you are seeking you are there introspect you are there because who else is seeking you are seeking and now you are there please tell me where kabir has gone where is that seeker who was seeking and seeking and hungering and weeping and crying for you we consider it is a very deep state when you are searching and searching and looking for these things you will not be there when buddha happens either buddha is or you either god is or you so do not wait or desire because your desire of when will buddha happen to me and when will i become a buddha nature when will i become enlightened this very desire will create a barrier and the, the last barrier for achieving total freedom the desire for freedom is the last barrier to be enlightened even this desire for enlightenment has to be thrown but it has to be natural it has to be cast away one of the great masters zen masters linchi used to say if you meet a buddha anywhere kill him kill him immediately if you meet buddha anywhere in your meditation kill him immediately it he means it this desire to be a buddha to be enlightened if you meet him anywhere kill him total desirelessness is needed and when i say total desirelessness i mean that even the desire for total desirelessness must be dropped you are without any desire you are without any thought not even aware that there is no thought there is no desire then it happens this is a rare moment something like this used to happen to ram krishna then a mystic tota puri came and that is a different story another time i'll explain enough for now